I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's the guy that says the weather's clear. Can do, can do, this guy says the horse can do, if he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I go for do. Valentine's Day on the morning do. line. The this guy, guy says the horse can fight tonight. But look at him, he says the horse can fight. Do. Do. The can do. Do. The can do. Do. The can do. do. But if you're a boy, I hear it's all right. Of course, it all depends. Had rain last night. I know it's Valentine's Day. Like what? Fine. Like what? 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 Like I know it's Valentine's, 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 Valentine's,
I mean, the Nathan the Church has been running a floating crap game around here and getting away with it by moving it to a different spot every night. Why are you telling us this, Your Honor? I am telling you this because I know you two bums work for Detroit, wrestling up customers for that crap game. We do? Yeah. Oh. You can tell him for me. I know that right now he's scampering about trying to find a spot. But he's not going to find one, because everyone knows Brannigan is breathing down their neck. Hi, Nathan. Fellas, I'm having terrible trouble on account of that lousy Brannigan, and I... <laughs> Hello, Lieutenant. I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. Nathan, I've just been discussing with these fellows your crap game. I imagine you were having a bit of trouble finding a spot. Well, uh, the heat is on, as you must know from the fact you gotta live on your salary, but, uh... Nathan, did you find a place? What's that cop want for me? What, am I a sex maniac or something? I merely run a crap game for the convenience of those who want a little action. And in return, I take a small cut. Is that a crime? Well, yeah, but... Nathan, did you find a place? Did you find a place for the game? Did I find a place? Yeah, guys, I found a place. We're holding the crap game tomorrow night at Radio City Music Hall. How are you going to fix the usher? I tried all the regular places, the back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. You said once might be a chance to the Biltmore Garage. I was over to the Biltmore Garage, talked to Joey Biltmore himself. He says he might take a chance and let me use the place if I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash, he won't take my marker. Your marker's no good, huh? What do you mean? A marker is just a piece of paper that says, I owe you one thousand dollars, sign Nathan Detroit. A marker is like what you pledge a man cannot welch on. It's like not saluting the flag. My mark is as good as gold, only Joy Biltmore don't think so. Me without a livelihood? I've been running the crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what today is? Yeah. Mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, we've been engaged 14 years. <laughs> Nathan, concentrate on the game. Yeah. The town's up to here with high rollers. The Greeks in town. And Brandy Bottle Bait. Squint and squint. I know, we can make a fortune, but where can I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand. But we ain't got a grand on hand. And they've now got a lock on the door of the gym at Public School 84. Dance the stop from behind McCloskey's bar. But Mrs. McCloskey ain't a good scout. And things being how they are, the back of the police station is out. So the Biltmore Garage is the spot, but the 1,000 bucks we ain't got. Why you should old reliable Nathan, 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 Nathan Detroit. If you're looking for action, he'll furnish the spot. Even when the heat is on, it's never too hot. Not for good old reliable Nathan, where it's always just a short walk to the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. There are well-heeled shooters everywhere, everywhere. There are well-heeled shooters everywhere. And an awful lot of lettuce for the fella who can get us. If we only had a lousy little friend, we could be a millionaire. Nathan, 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 Detroit. If the size of your bundle you want to increase, he'll arrange that you go broken, quiet, and peace. In a hideout provided by Nathan, where there are no neighbors to squawk. It's the oldest established permanent floating crack in New York, where's the action? Where's the game? Gotta have a game or we'll die from shame. It's the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. Do not worry, Nathan Detroit's crap game will float again. My boys will let you know where it is. Alright. Say Nathan, you know who else is looking for some action? Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson's in town. Oh, Sky Masterson. Now there's the highest player of them all. Higher than the Greek? Higher than anybody. Why do they think they call him Sky? 
And once someone bet 5 G's on a cockroach. Another time, he wouldn't take penicillin on account he had bet 10 G's that temperature would go to 104. Did it? Did it? He's so lucky it went to 106, good old Sky. Maybe he could borrow the thousand from Sky. No, nah, not from Sky. With him, that kind of money isn't, uh, isn't lending money. It's betting money. Hey, so why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him the thousand on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson? I'm perfectly willing to take the chance, as long as I can find a bet which there's no possible way of losing. He likes crazy bets, like which lump of sugar will a fly land on, or how far can he kick a piece of cheesecake? Hey, cheesecake, listen. Run down to Mindy's restaurant and ask Mindy how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday, and how many pieces of stew. How much cheesecake? How much stew? What do you want to know for? Yeah. Just find out. Now beat it. Here comes Adelaide. If she finds out and run the crap game, she'll never set foot on me again. Oh, hello, Nathan. Hello, Adelaide Pigeon. Go ahead, girls. Order me a tuna fish on rye with a chocolate sundae, tomato ketchup, and mayonnaise. Okay, Adelaide. We gotta get back to the hot box. You still rehearsing? Yeah, that slave driver, Charlie. He's been looking at us all day. Finally, I said, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get something to eat. And he said, you don't wanna eat. You just wanna meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. Cheap bum? So what'd you say to him? I told him. I said, I'll meet you. You know, well, don't upset yourself. Hey, how's your cold? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Nathan? Yeah. Happy anniversary. A present for me? A pelt, wow. That's Read the great. card. Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly, so put this belt around your belly. <laughs> Adelaide, that's so sweet. Hey, listen, about your present. I was going to buy you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and two rubies on the side. Oh, Nathan, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's all right, I didn't. I'm sorry. That's all right. I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. Yeah, well, don't worry, honey. One day I'll be in the money and you'll have more mink than a mink. Nathan, darling, I could do without anything. Just so long as you don't start running that crap game again. Adelaide, what an absurd thought. 1,200 cheesecake, 1,500 strudel. What? Last week, maybe sold 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake? That's great. Uh-huh. Oh. Nathan, what is this? Oh, nothing, honey. Oh. Hey, any news yet? Not yet, Harry. I'll let you know. Okay, Detroit. And what was that about? Oh, well, my, uh, his uh, wife's having a baby. Why is he asking you? He's nervous. It's his first wife. Oh. <laughs> now listen, honey, I'm expecting a fella, and I know you're hungry. Nathan, and... are you trying to get rid of me? No, no, no. I just don't want your sandwich to get soggy, that's all. Boys, take Adelaide over to the drugstore. You see, Adelaide, it's cold out, and you're sick, and there's a lot of open manholes around. Oh, Nathan, you're so wonderful. You're the sweetest person. Goodbye. Hey, Masterson, how's it going, Sky? Nathan, you old promoter. Hey, you look great, Sky. Well, I feel great, Nathan. Just got back from two wonderful weeks out west in Nevada. Beautiful scenery, healthful climate, and I beat him for 50 G's of blackjack. 50 G's? Yep. Hey, you gonna be in town long? No, I'm flying out to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yeah, there's lots of action down there. Hey, wanna go with me? Nah, I got a lot of things to do. Say, in the meantime, how about we swing over at Mindy's restaurant and pick up a piece of cheesecake or something? No, I'm not really hungry. Tell me, uh, how's Adelaide? Oh, fine, fine. Still uh, dancing at the hot box. Yeah. Suppose uh, one of these days you two will be getting married, huh? Yeah, we all gotta go sometime. Oh, but Nathan, we can fight it. Guys like us, Nate, we gotta remember. As pleasant as a doll's company may be, she always takes second place to aces back to back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, you hungry yet? Maybe we can drop over to Mindy's restaurant for a piece of strudel or cheesecake or something. No, I think I'm gonna get the late results. But you will admit, Mindy does sell the best cheesecake in the country. Yes, I'm quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. And yet there are still some people who prefer the strudel. Yep. Say, offhand, what do you think he sells more of? The strudel or the cheesecake? Well, I never really gave it much thought, but I guess if everyone's like I am, I guess he sells more cheesecake. For how much? Huh? For how much? Nathan! I never knew you to be a betting man. You always took your percentage off the top. Yeah, well, I thought for full time's sake, I'd give you a little action and bet you $1,000 that yesterday, Mindy sold more, sold more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you a little story. 
Oh. When I was a young man about to go out into the world, my father says to me a very important thing. He says to me like this. Son, the old guy says, I'm sorry that I'm not able to bankroll you to a very large start in life, but seeing as how I don't have any potatoes to give you, I'll give you a very important piece of advice. One day in your travels, a man will come up to you and show you a brand new deck of cards on which the seal is not yet broken. And this man is going to offer to bet you that he can make a jack of spades jump out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you are standing there, you're going to wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nate, I don't claim that you've been clocking Mindy's cheesecake or anything. Hey, you don't think that. Look, if you really want to make a bet, I'll bet you the same thousand bucks that you, uh, you don't know the color of the necktie you've got on. We got a bet? No bet. Blue? What a crazy color. Nate, you took Adelaide to the drugstore. Well, don't bother me. Hi, it's Guy. Hi, how's it with you fellas? We're all right. Nicely, nicely. Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore, and she said for you to be sure to pick her up after the show at the Hotbox, and don't be late. Yes, dear. I mean, yes. Yes, dear? That's husband talk if I ever heard it. Nate, you're trapped. And Adelaide, you got the kind of doll that's most difficult to unload. I don't want to unload, Adelaide. I love her. And besides, a guy without a doll, well, who would holler at him? A doll is a necessity. Nate, I ain't putting the rap on dolls. I'm just saying. The guy should have them around when he wants them. They should be easy to find, like cough drops. Not dolls like Adelaide. Nathan, figuring late for age, all dolls are pretty much the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then how come you ain't got them? How come you're going to Havana alone? Well, I like to travel light, but if I wanted to take a doll to Havana, there's a large assortment available. Not real high-class dolls. Any doll, you name it. Any doll and I name her? Will you bet me on that? One thousand dollars, if I name a doll, you'll take her to Havana tomorrow? You got a bet. I name her. Her? Oh, cider! <laughs> going to take a pickaxe and rip up Broadway from end to end. They do that every day. <sighs> Pardon me, do you uh, take sinners here? Indeed we do. Sister Sarah, how do you do? My name is Arvidia. Arvidia Abernathy. Sky Masterson. What's wrong? Yes, what's the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin. Oh, you poor man. I've wasted my life in gambling and evil betting, but I've suddenly realized the horrible things that betting can lead to. Agatha, coffee please. And didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Oh, probably. I've been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come in here. And you're willing to give up gambling? Oh, absolutely. I never would have started gambling had I not fallen in with evil companions who were offering me sucker bets. Here, young man. Thank you. You just go right on talking to Sister Sarah, and you'll be all right. I'm glad you found us. Me too. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Very good. I wish we could reach more sinners like you. We are out every day trying. Well, have you uh, tried the nighttime? How's that? Well, as a former sinner, I happen to know that the best time to reach sinners is between the hours of midnight and dawn. You might uh, even try having an all-night session against the devil. Very good suggestion indeed. Thank you, Brother Masterson. You're welcome. Coffee is so good, I can understand why it's not a sin. Nice woman. I suppose she uh, sort of looks after you. We look after each other. <laughs> and I suppose if one of you goes somewhere, then the other goes along. Yes, of course. Of course. 
Here are two pamphlets that I think that you should read. They will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we'll be holding a midnight prayer meeting this Thursday, which I'm sure you will wish to attend. I'm sure. Look, Miss Sarah, I hope you don't think I'm stepping out of line, but it's so nice to see a beautiful doll like you. I mean, a nice-looking woman like you in a mission like this, sacrificing herself for the sake of others, but don't you ever go anywhere or travel or anything? I would like to go to Africa. Well, that's a little far away, but there's a lot of nice places only a couple hours away from New York by plane. Have you ever uh, been in a plane? No. It's wonderful. Here's another pamphlet that I think that you should read. Thanks. Look, I'm going to need a lot of personal help. My heart is as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. I'll be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. Well, I'm going to need some private lessons. Why don't we uh, go out to dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry, just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. <laughs> hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? It's not Proverbs, it's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. No, there's no peace under the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 22. Isaiah? Isaiah. Two things been in every hotel room in this country. Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. <laughs> I must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You read the Bible 12 times? Well, sure, why not? Besides, in Bibles, this is the strangest information frequently comes in handy. I once won five G's on a parlay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Lying's a sin. Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five yells to follow. You need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Let's be honest, Sarge. This place is laying an egg. You need my help. How about I can fill this place with sinners? I don't bet. How about I make you a little proposition? When is this big prayer meeting of yours, Thursday night? I'll guarantee you that I can fill that place with one dozen sinners. And not only that, I can make them sit there and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Oh, uh, have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? Because I'm hungry. Here. What's this? That's Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. If you don't trust it, ask anyone in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. So I'll uh, pick you up tomorrow at noon for dinner. At noon? Well, yeah, it'll take us some time to get there. To get where? Um, my favorite restaurant. And where is that? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. El Cafe Cubana in Havana? Well, sure. Where did you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? But Havana? Well, yeah, why not? Besides, the plane gets us there and back in the same night, and the food's great. I now realize, Mr. Masterson, that when you're describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Miss Sarah, that as beautiful as a sergeant may be, she's still a sergeant. Please go away. Look, why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all, except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Well, it's good to know that it's just me personally, not all guys in general. It's good to know that somewhere out in the world, there may be a guy that appeals to this, Sarge. Wonder what that guy will be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry, I'll know. For I've imagined every bit of him From his strong moral fiber to the wisdom in his head, to the homey aroma of his pipe. You have wished yourself a Scarsdale Galahad, the breakfast-eating Brooks Brothers type. Yes. And I shall meet him when the time is right. You've got this guy all figured out, huh? I have. Right down to what he smokes. All figured out, don't you? All figured out. By the two pair of pants. I know why you told me that he would love me on the ground. I know how I brought to his arms that at last I come home safe and sound. I'll stay up there. I shall wait. Thank you. 
dope it up like that. What are you picking, a guy or a horse? I wouldn't expect a gambler to understand. Oh, would you like to know how a gambler feels about the big heartthrob? No. Well, I'll tell you. Mine will come as a surprise to me. Mine, I leave to chance and chemistry. Chemistry? Yeah, chemistry. Suddenly I'll know, long before we can speak, I'll know then and there. I'll know, and I won't ever ask how I care, how I care, how I care. But I'll stop, and I'll stare, and I'll know. Am I smart? But I'll stop and I'll stare at that face in the throng. Yes, I'll know when my love comes above. When Stop by tomorrow in case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. Yeah, hello? Is this the Biltmore Garage? Let me talk to Joey Biltmore. Who's this? Nathan Detroit. Yeah, this is Joey. What do you want? It's about the, you the know. What? The what? The crap game. The what? The crap game. Hold on a minute. I got a customer. Well, hurry it up, will you? That'll be $8. What were you saying, Nathan? The crap game. Don't say that on the phone. Suppose the cops are listening. Sorry, listen. The dice game. I got to know if I can use your place tomorrow. If I get a thousand bucks. I'll have it to you tomorrow. Then call me tomorrow. Listen, if you're going to have that tone of voice with me, I'll take the game someplace else. Then have it someplace else. But where can I have it? Listen, would I lie to you? Yeah. Come on. I'm getting the money from Sky Masterson. It's How guaranteed. do you know? It's a bet. I can't lose. I bet he could take a doll to Havana. Why couldn't he? <laughs> she ain't the type of doll that goes to Havana. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's why I'm going to win the bet. Don't be so sure. It ain't a horse, it's a doll. But Joey... Nathan, there'll be no crap game here unless I get my dough in advance. All right, you'll get it. Listen, one thing. Can I at least tell the guys that the game's gonna be at your place? Not till I get my dough. All right, you'll get it. Goodbye. Bye. Hope that guy gets stabbed by a Studebaker.
Joey Biltmore. God. <laughs> Hello, Clyde Bay. Hello, Nathan. How are you, handsome? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, what have you got there? A book. A book? You're always reading books. You're becoming a regular bookie. But, Nathan, darling, this is a very interesting book. The doctor gave it to me. I went to him about my cold. <coughs> How is your cold? Oh, it's the same. So the doctor asked me how long I had had it. And I said, quite a long time. And he said he thought it was on account of me dancing around with hardly any clothes on, which is what I usually wear. So he said to read this book because he thought it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? Oh, no, Nathan, Nathan, no. This is a type of psychology that tells you why girls do certain kinds of things. Hey. Would it tell you what kind of doll would go for uh, a certain kind of guy, which she wouldn't normally do so? What do you mean? Well, uh, just for instance, there are certain kind of dolls you can almost bet won't go for certain kind of guys. Nathan, no matter how terrible the fella seems, you can't be so sure some girl won't go for him. Take us. <laughs> Nathan, starting with next week, I'll be getting a raise. So with the money I'll be making, I was kind of wondering that maybe we could finally get married? Adelaide, of course we're going to get married uh, sooner or later, but... Uh... I, I know, Nathan, but... Uh, I'm starting to worry about my mother. <laughs> your mother? What about your mother? Sit down, Nathan. This is something I never told you before. But my mother, back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're already married. She thinks we're married? Why would she think a thing like that? Well, I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island. They get married. Then why is it such a small state? <laughs> anyway, Nathan, I wrote my mother that I was married. You did, huh? Uh-huh. And then, after about two years... What, after about two years? We had a baby? You told your mother we had a baby? Well, you, you see, Nathan, Mother wouldn't have understood if we didn't. Well, what type of baby was it? He was a boy. I named him after you, Nathan. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. 
And where is uh, Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Oh, he's in boarding school. I wrote Mother he won the football game last Saturday. I wish I had a bet on it. But Nathan, that's not all. <laughs> Don't tell me he has a little sister. All those years, Nathan! Mother believes in big families! Just give me the grand total. Five? Five? <laughs> Your mother must be a glutton for punishment. But Nathan, now we're gonna get married and it won't be a problem. Adelaide, how could you do such a thing to a nice old broad like your mother? But Nathan, you don't even know my mother. But I'll be meeting her soon, and what do I tell her? What do I tell her I did with the five kids? Train them to the Phillies or something? Come on, what are we gonna do? We could get married. But Adelaide, marriage ain't something you jump into like it was a kettle of fish or something. We ain't ready. <laughs> but I'm ready, Nathan. Sally's wedding shop. I can't guess. Nathan, it's the wedding veil. I've had it for three years. I won't show it to you because it's bad luck. Would you like to see it? It's bad luck. So you see, Nathan, I got the veil. All we need now is our license and a blood test. A what? Blood test. It's the law. What a city. First they closed my crap game, then they opened my veins. <laughs> Nathan, you're not planning on running that crap game again, are you? Adelaide, how could you think such a thing? Why you think I gave up the crap game to begin with? It's because I love you, and I want us two to be the happiest married couple in the world. Anybody see an earring out here? <gasps> you! I'm all dated up tomorrow with Society Max, and he breaks it on account of your dopey crap game. <laughs> Honest, Adelaide, I pity you. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Adelaide, look at me. I'm down on my knees. Oh, get up. It reminds me of your crap game. Come on, Adelaide, we're gonna be all right. Come on, we're gonna get married. I don't believe you anymore. Oh, come on, cheer up, honey. Let me see that old smile. <laughs> That's my girl. Listen, I'll see you tomorrow, all right? I gotta go. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Heard that one before. <laughs> it says here in this book, the average unmarried female, basically insecure, due to some long frustration, may react with psychosomatic symptoms, difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory tract. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a person can develop a cold. You could spray you wherever you figure the strap's a cock eye like. You could give her a shot for whatever she's got, but it just won't work. If she's tired of getting the fish eye from the hole, Tell Clark, a person, to develop a cold. It says here, the female remaining single, just in the legal sense, shows a neurotic tendency. See note, see note, note. Chronic organic syndromes, toxic or hypertense, involving the eye and the ear and the nose and the throat. In other words, just from wondering whether the wedding is on or off, a person <coughs> can develop a cough. You could feed her all day with the vitamin A and the promo fizz, but the medicine never gets anywhere near where the trouble is. If she's tired of getting a name for herself and the name ain't his, a person <laughs> develop a cough. And furthermore, just from stalling and stalling and stalling the wedding trip, a person can develop love grip when they go.
get on the train for Niagara and she can hear church bells chime. The compartment is air conditioned and the mood sublime. Then they get off at Saratoga for the 14th time. A person can develop log grip, log grip, la post nasal drip with the wishes and the phrases and the sinus that's really a pivot from the lack of community property and the feeling she's getting too old. A person can develop a bad, bad cold. What are you looking at? Sky was following Miss Sarah, and you should have seen her. She gave him a look that would have cooled off a moose at mating time. Good. <clears throat> Just so we don't take the doll to Havana. Havana? He couldn't take this doll to New Rochelle. Say, where's Nathan? He ought to be lining up the game. I don't know. I suppose trying to see Adelaide. She's mad at him again. That Miss Adelaide. She's always taking his mind off on his work. Yeah, it's a shame that a smart businessman like Nathan has to go and fall in love with his own fiance. <laughs> Benny, we should be tolerant because it is his weakness. And we should be tolerant because I'm told that's a worldwide weakness. Look. What's playing at the Roxy? I'll tell you what's playing at the Roxy. A picture about a Minnesota man so in love with a Mississippi girl that he sacrifices everything and moves all the way to Biloxi. That's what's playing at the Roxy. What's in the Daily News? I'll tell you what's in the Daily News. A story about a guy who bought his wife a small ruby, which would otherwise would have been his union dues. That's what's in the Daily News. What's happening all over? I'll tell you what's happening all over. Guy sitting home by a television set who once used to be something of a rover. That's what's happening all over. Love is the thing that has a victim. And it looks like Nathan's just another victim. Yes, sir! When you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some doll. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for a Jane. When you meet a gent paying all kinds of rent for a flat that could flatten the Taj Mahal, Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money that the guy's only doing it for some doll. When you meet a Joe, saving half of his dough, you can bet they'll be making it for some doll. When a bum buys wine like a bum can afford, it's a cinch the bum is under the thumb of some little broad. When you meet a mug, lately out of a jug, and he's still lifting platinum folder all. Call it hell, call it heaven, it's a probable 12 or 7, that the guy's only doing it for some dog. When you meet a sport, and 
in it, cash as one short. You can bet that he's banking it with some gall. When a guy wears tails with a front meaning white, who the hell do you think he's tickling pink on Saturday night? When your lazy swab takes a good steady job and he smells from vitalis and barber's ball. Call it dumb, call it clever, I'll you can give us forever that the guy's only doing it for some doll, some doll, some doll. The guy's only doing it for some doll. I do think you should have paid some attention to him. Yes, he attended every street meeting we had this morning. He must be interested in our work. Very. By the way, you spoke beautifully this morning, Sarah. No, I can't reach these people. I never should have volunteered for this post. Well, let's go into lunch. And I was going to convert Broadway all by myself. I was going to take these gamblers and have them just begging to come into our mission. General Cartwright. Good morning, Sarah. Arvidia. Good morning, General. We didn't know you were coming to town, General. I got in early this morning. I've spent the last hour trying to find you. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been holding some extra street meetings, trying to stimulate more interest. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. Sarah, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, won't you come in and have some lunch with us? No, I don't have time, dear. I have several other calls to make. Sarah, we at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We have decided to close this branch of the mission. Close the mission? But General, please, even if I can't do good here, someone can. Sarah, there are so many calls on us, so many other places where our work is really needed. But we're doing much better now. Yes, we've announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting? But will anyone be here? Will anybody come? Pardon me, I couldn't help it over here. General, my name is Sky Masterson, former sinner. How do you do? <laughs> How do I do? I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Miss Sarah can do a fine job here. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. Well, a dollar will get you ten. What? Look, why don't you uh, come to the meeting and find out for yourself? Doesn't that sound like a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance, General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the chair? Where's the chair? I don't believe this. Look at that time. I'm sick of waiting. Hey! You all got your carnation? Yeah. yeah. Remember, no one will be let into the game without they got red carnation. It's like a password. So where's the yeah, game? Yeah, so where's the game? I'll tell you in a minute. Nathan, is it okay? Can I tell the guys that set the built more garage? Not yet. I got stolen for a while. The money ain't come from Sky yet. No, but it's almost 11 o'clock. They won't stick around much so longer. Don't fool me. Listen, I left nicely at the hotel to wait for the money. Where's the money? hasn't come yet. I thought I told you to wait for it. I had to get some groceries. I was feeling a little faint. Listen, get back to the hotel and wait for the money from Sky and don't come back even if you starve to death. Okay, Nathan. <laughs> Where's the game, Troy? Hey, Harry the Horse, how's things in Brooklyn Harry? You look great. Nathan, if you do not have a place for the game, tell us. We will see, seek elsewhere for entertainment tonight. Now yeah. take it easy, guys. Hope for your sake you have a game for tonight, Detroit, inasmuch as it happened to be entertaining a very prominent guest tonight. 
think you might have heard of him. Let me introduce you, Big Julius from Chicago. Oh, why, uh, how do you do? Welcome to our fair city, where, as you know, the heat is on. But just stick around and you'll get some action. What do you say, Big Julius? Should we stick around or should we blow? Oh, I came here to shoot crap. Let's shoot crap! Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Go on, sure. Nathan, if there's no crap game tonight, I'm sure Big Julie would be considerably displeased. Big Julie, he does not like to be displeased, as you can hear from people who one time or another have displeased him. I must admit, it's hard to find such people in the fact that they are no longer around and about. Ooh. Harry, you don't think I'd be so rude as to displease a gentleman like Big Julie here, do you? Big Julie, let me tell you, when Nathan Detroit makes a promise, you can count on it, that. Well, well, an interesting gathering indeed. The cream of society. Angie the Ox, Society Mac, Rusty Charlie, Liver Lips Louie, and hey, Harry the Horse, all the way from Brooklyn. And pardon me, but I'm very bad on names. Your face looks familiar. Mind telling me where you're from? East Cicero, Illinois. Oh, and what do you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. Oh, well, don't ever help my mother across the street. Mmm, <laughs> lovely. This looks like the male corn from Boston time. What's the occasion? Well, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's a yeah, party. party. Big party. party. Mm -hmm. A party. Indeed. What kind of party? It's the bachelor's dinner party. Yeah, the nation's yeah. getting married. What? Yeah. That is correct, yeah. Lieutenant. The bachelor's dinner party. Nathan's getting married. Yeah. Yeah. For, 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 for he's a dollar to fell For he's a dollar to fell For he's a dollar to fell Which nobody cannot deny. Oh, Nathan, why didn't you tell me? It was a surprise. <laughs> but when I saw you standing here with all these It's a bachelor dinner. It's a bachelor dinner. Yes, sir, a bachelor yes, dinner. Yes, bachelor dinner. Well, just think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to be Mrs. Nathan Detroit. Time certainly does fly. Yeah. So tell me, Nathan, when is the happy date? When will it be, Nathan? Well, um, uh, Nathan, these fellows are nice enough to give you a bachelor dinner. You could at least tell them the wedding date. Well, uh, we need time for our license and our blood test, right, guys? Yep. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get married tomorrow night, right after the hot box? Adelaide, we need time for our license. You can elope. What? You can drive down to Maryland. What's the name of that town? Pimlico. No, no, not Pimlico, Nathan. Uh, Elkton, Elkton. They'll marry you right away. They don't even ask for a blood test. Ain't that unhealthy? That is a great idea. Elope, I'll lend you my getaway car. A Buick. Oh, Nathan, let's do it. Well... What the hell? Oh, oh, yeah, right. yeah. My congratulations to Nathan. I only hope there's nothing in heredity. Nathan, I got so many things to do before we elope tomorrow night. You'll be at the hot box. I'll be at the hot box, all dressed up in whatever you decide to elope in. Oh, I'm so happy. I want to wire your mother, only what will I wire her? Well, uh, send a telegram, but date it back. No, I better wait till we have five kids. It won't take us long. <laughs> Bye! Nathan, you're indeed a lucky fellow. A most beautiful doll indeed. What do you say, Big Julie? Tell me, how long you known the doll? Fourteen years. Let's shoot crap. Yeah. 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 Nathan, you better find a place. But the money ain't come from Sky yet. Maybe it won't come. Maybe he took the doll to Havana. How could he? He couldn't have. She couldn't have gone. Thank you. 
Bingo, the second oldest mission in Cuba. Come on. Where are we going? To see the oldest. Oh, come on. sort of uh, native flavoring. What's the name of the flavoring? Bacardi. These are wonderful. I think I'll have another. Take it easy, killer. <laughs> it's over. You're still champ. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> you all right? Am I all right? Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me now that we're cozy and clean. Oh, 
it we kissed tonight that's the way i've just got to behave boy if i were a lamp i'd light and if i were a banner i'd wave ask me how do i feel little me with my quiet upbringing well sir all i can say is if i were a gate i'd be swinging Watch I start popping my spring. Or if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. Ask me how do I feel from this chemistry lesson I'm learning. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a fringe, I'd be burning. My morale would crack from the wonderful way that you looked. Boy, if I were a duck, I'd quack. And if I were a ghost, I'd be cooked. Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. How? If I were a salad, I know I'd be slashing my dressing. How to describe this whole beautiful thing? Well, if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, Stop, look. You know, I took you to the van in the first place. I made a bet. That's how I met you in the first place. I made a bet. How else could a girl get to meet a gambler? Look, I'm serious. Oh, look, I gotta think what's best for you. Oh, no, you talk just like a missionary. <laughs> Sarah? How do you do? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nathan and I are getting married tomorrow night right after the hot box. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I'm going to love being a housewife. I've tried all the other rooms. I want to try the kitchen now. <laughs> well, uh, Miss Adelaide certainly seems happy. She's in love. Yeah, I so. What time is it? I don't know, four o'clock. This is your time of day, isn't it? Yep. I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful and wonderful. Yeah, you're finding out something now that I've known for a long time. My time of day is the dark time. A couple of deals before dawn. When the street belongs to the cop. The janitor with the mop and the grocery clerks are all. 
gone when the smell of the rain washed pavement comes up clean and fresh and cold when the street lamp light fills the gutter with gold that's my time of day my time of day and you're the only doll I've ever wanted to share it with me. Obadiah. Obadiah? What's that? Obadiah Masterson. That's my real name. You're the first person I ever told that to. I've, I've never been in love before. Now at once it's you it's you forevermore i've never been in love before i thought my heart was safe i thought i knew the score but this is love that's all too strange and strong I'm full of foolish song, and out my song must pour. So please forgive this helpless haze I'm in. I've really never been in the Strange things in my day, but never a floating kraken going full blast in a mission. Rap game? Sarah, you know I had nothing to do with this, right? Sarah! I never should have gone with you. It was wrong. No, you went to help the mission. Did I? Look, am I going to see you tomorrow? Everyone is welcome at the mission. That's not what I mean. It's no good, Skye. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What the hell kind of doll are you anyway? I'm a mission doll. <laughs>
A bag, a hat, and some shoes. That was late 48. I recall that last night in his apartment, he tried to remove them all. And I said, as I ran down the hall, take back your mink, take back your pearls. What made you think that I was one of those girls? Take back the gown, the shoe, and the hat. I may be down, but I'm not flat as all that. I thought that each expensive gift you'd arrange was a token of your esteem. But when I think of what you want in exchange, it all seems a horrible dream. So take back your mink to from whence it came and tell them the Holland's arrived it for some other day. Here? Oh, no, sir. Mr. Choit has not been here all day, sir. Well, uh, bring me a rye and a soda. <laughs> Thanks. Sky, Sky, have you seen Miss Adelaide? Huh? I bring a message for her from Nathan. I wish Nathan would bring his own messages. Well, where's Nathan? What's the message? This way. Nathan's aunt in Pittsburgh was taken ill with... A the... rare tropical disease. Yeah, that's not bad. Anyway, Nathan has to Look get Look nicely. Where is Nathan? What is the message? The craft game is still going on. Since last night? Big Julie, being a large loser, does not wish the game to terminate. In fact, he's most insistent. So I find another place and the game goes on. So, uh, where is the game? You looking for some action? Well, not really nicely. You see, I gave a marker to someone and I'd kind of like to clear it up before... I'm going away. I'll meet you outside. Well, what about Nathan's message? Oh, Miss Adley. Nathan is in Pittsburgh with a rare tropical ant. Goodbye. What? I don't understand. Guy Nathan has to come here tonight. We're eloping to get married. Isn't that crap 
game again. You know, Nathan, does it surprise you? Oh, I thought he was gonna change. Change, change. Why is it that many of you dolls get a guy you like, you take him in for alterations? And what about you men? Why can't you marry people like other people do and live normal like people with a house, with wallpaper and bookends? No, Miss Adelaide. What do you mean, no? Guys like Nathan Detroit and, yeah, Sky Masterson. We don't belong in lives like that. So when dolls like you get mixed up with guys like us, it's no good. It's no good. I'll see you later. Well, where are you going? I don't know. Las Vegas, maybe? I Wait. got a ticket on the late plane. Well, well, will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. Well, tell him I never want to speak to him again. And have him call me here. <laughs> Look, why don't you find some other guy? I can't. I love Nathan. Wait till you fall for someone. You'll find out. Yeah. In other words, just from sitting alone, had a table reserved for two. A person can develop the flu. You could wrap a in wool leaf, and I mean the warmest friend. You could wrap her in coats and sweaters till it's more than her frame can stand. If she still gets the feeling she's naked from looking at her left hand, a person could develop the flu. <laughs> the flu. 103.2. So much virus inside of the microscope side looks like a day at the zoo. Just from watching her memories in writing and a story her folks can be told. A person can develop a cold. Nathan. <laughs> We won't have to explain anything. It'll be very clear. I just want to get away from this whole place. To go someplace where, where the sinners are all respectable and well-behaved? You saw what happened last night. They gambled in our mission. Right. And someday they'll be praying there. Even guys like Sky Masterson. He came seeking refuge. He came seeking me. Did you know that? <laughs> are you kidding? I knew that the minute he started poking fun at you. But I didn't know you were going to get stuck on him. I'll get over it. What do you want to get over it for? It's not pneumonia. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him enough, he will not be a gambler. Sarah, dear, I've always taken care of you. All I want is for you to be happy. Velvet, I can wish you all the color of your coat. Wait 
To be. The general is coming and she is expecting, yeah, well. A tough doll, huh? Well, very few people will be there. In fact, nobody and, uh. I don't think Mr. Masterson is interested in our troubles. Come on, we've got to hurry. Miss Sarah, you've forgotten something, but being a gambler, I never forget things like this. You still hold my marker for cold synergy. Thank you, Mr. Masterson, but I'd rather you forgot about it. Well, I can't welch, welch a marker. Mr. Masterson. Last night, our mission was filled with your friends. Let us say we are even. If you welch on that marker, I'll tell the whole town that you're a dirty welcher. Nicely, where's the crab game? It's about 15 minutes walk. Which here. way? This way. Let's go. Shoot crap. We had enough. Yeah, yeah. let's go home. Oh, you yeah. see, Big Julie, the boys are slightly fatigued from weariness, having been shooting crap so long. Namely, 24 hours. Yeah. I do not care who is tired. About 25 G's, so nobody leaves. <laughs> Guys, I'm beginning to see the logic of Big Julie. It's not that he's a bad loser, he just prefers to win. Right, Big Julie? Give me the dice. I'm shooting 500. Take 200. I'm half dead. If you do not shut up, Big Julie will arrange the other half. Ha! And it? Snake eyes, you lose. But the dice is still yours, and your luck's bound to change and... Shut up, another five. Another 200. And it? Snake eyes, you lose. Tough luck, Big Julie. Well, that cleans me. Yeah. Yeah. But I ain't through yet. I will now play on credit. Oh. Come on, Big Julie, the guy's are tired. Me, personally, I'm as fresh as a daisy, but... Then I'll play with you. With me? Yeah, you. You've been raking down out of every pot. You must by now have quite a bundle. Well, being I assume the risk, I should assume some doubt. Detroit, I'm gonna roll you willy or nilly. If I lose, I will give you my marker. And if I lose? You'll give him cash. Let me hear from Big Jewel. You will give me cash. Now I heard it. Here's my marker. Put up your dough. Is there anything wrong? No, it's just funny. I owe you $1,000, signed X. How's it come, how is it you can write 1,000, but you can't even spell your own name? I was good in arithmetic, but I stunk in English. Hmm. Here, this will put you through Harvard. I'm rolling 1,000, and to change my luck, I will use my own dice. What? what? My own dice. I had them made for me, especially in Chicago. Hey, Julie, you cannot interpolate Chicago dice in a New York crab game. That is a breach of faith. Show me where it says that in Emily Post. Well, I don't wish to seem petty, but can I at least see these dice? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, these dice ain't got no spots on them. I had the spots taken off for luck, but I remember where the spots formerly was. Oh. So let me get this straight. You're gonna roll blank dice and go into where the spots formerly was? Why not? I see no reason. A five and a five. My point is ten. Well, I still got a chance. Tenzi, Tenzi, come again. Hope he falls on his ends. Hey! Oh. A ten, I win! A ten? A six and a four. Which is a six and which is the four? Either way, I'm shooting two thousand. Get it up! Oh, oh, I just remembered. I got to elope tonight. Adelaide's waiting for me to talk about it. Get up the two thousand! <laughs> Seven, I win. What a surprise. Detroit, I'm going to take it easy on you this time. What do you mean? I'm rolling for you a dollar. I'll take all of it. How do you like that? Snake eyes, I lose. For this, I got to bend down? Now I'll give you a chance. What do you mean? I'm rolling for you three Gs. $3,000? I'm rolling for you three Gs. Put it down there. 
Wouldn't it be easy if I put it right into your pocket? Put it up! Eleven, I win! Well, that cleans me. Now I'll play with you guys! Ain't you gonna give me a chance to win my money back? All right, Detroit, that sounds fair. What are you gonna use for money? I'll use my marker. Can you expect Big Julie to put up cash? Nathan done it. Sure I done it. Well, what kind of deal is this anyway? Take it easy, Nathan. And with this no spot dice, somebody ought to knock the spots off you. Nathan, yeah. don't make Big Julie have to do something to you. Yeah, I'm on my vacation. So shoot me, put me in cement. At least I'll know where I am. I stand here, run a crap game for you guys. I even promised to get married on account of it. And how do I wind up? Broken in a sewer. So believe me, my big tough friend from Chicago, Nothing you can do but not cheer me up. Here they are. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, fresh blood. You looking for some action? No, I'd just like to talk to some of the guys. We ain't talking. We're shooting crap. <coughs> well, it'll only take a minute. We're shooting crap. Look, it has to do with Miss Sarah Brown's mission. Who is this guy? Bella, I was telling you. Took the mission down to Havana. Oh, I get it. Look, fellow, why don't you go back to your praying tomato? You're slowing up the action around here. You want some action? How'd you care to make a wager on a small proposition? What's the proposition? Am I left or right-handed? How would I know a thing like that? Well, I'll give you a little hint. Hey! <laughs> Kindly return this to see his robot. Okay, look, guys. Tonight, at Miss Sarah Brown's mission at 409 West 49th Street, there's going to be a midnight prayer meeting. I promise to them that I deliver some sinners, and when it comes to sinning, you guys are pretty high up in the pain cards. What do you say? I don't want to waste no evening in a hallelujah joint. Yeah. yeah. Look, if you don't do it as a favor to me, do it as a favor to yourselves. I can guarantee you, the air in the mission smells a lot better than it does down here. I ain't working. No. Yeah. And maybe it wouldn't hurt you to learn something other than the odds of making it for the hard way. You've been reading the Bible too much. Yeah. Well, sure, what's wrong with the Bible? Maybe you don't read as lively as a scratch sheet, but it's at least twice as accurate. Yeah. Well, I tried. See you later, Nathan. Hey, uh, Scott, I temporarily regret I don't have the money to pay on that bet. You don't have to pay me. You won. But I thought you took the dough. You thought wrong. I'll see you later. Come on, Big Julie. Now I got enough cash to roll you with my dice. Nothing doing. With Ben's dice, he couldn't make a pass to save his own soul. Whoa! What did you say? Says with those dice, he couldn't make a pass to save his own soul. No, but maybe I can make a pass to save his. And yours! And yours! And yours! Okay, look, guys. I'm gonna roll the dice. I'm gonna bet each of you $1,000 against your souls. $1,000 cash against the marker for your soul. If I win, you show up at the mission tonight. What do you say? Let me guess. All right. Roll the dice, and if you lose, we each get a thousand bucks. And if you win, we just gotta show up one night at the Mission Dallas Cabaret. You show up at the Save a Soul mission. Okay. One meeting. Okay by me? Yeah. yeah. Okay by me, too. Yeah. How about you, Nathan? Thousand dollars against your soul. Me? I don't even know if I got one. Oh, you got one someplace. Hey, how do you spell soul? F-O-O. Oh, shut up. Okay, look, guys. Put on your markers. Give me the dice. Give me some room. Quit stalling already. Pull it out. Yeah. 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 Look. You see me roll for 100 Gs. I got a little bit more than dough riding on this one. <laughs> they call you Lady Luck, but there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. Tonight, oh, lock if you've ever been a lady to begin with. 
my sight. Stay with me, baby, I'm the fellow you pay me with. Lock me, lady. Lock me, lady. Lock me, lady. Lock me, a lady, tonight. Lock me, a lady, tonight. Lock if you've ever been a lady to begin with. Lock me, a lady, tonight. She have a heart. She have a soul. A roll roll up, up, roll up, roll up, snake roll eyes, and snake eyes. Roll, 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 roll up, up, roll up. Let's keep the party, oh, keep the party polite. Never get out of my sight. Stick your baby, stick your baby. Lock me a lady. Lock me a lady. Lock me a lady. Roll, will you roll, will you? What's the matter? Roll the dice. Chicago that I've been to a prayer meeting, no decent person will ever talk to me. Hey, Adelaide. Oh, what a coincidence. Hey, uh, did nicely explain to you about last night? I hope you ain't so upset about it. Please, let us not have a vulgar scene. After all, we are civilized people. We must not conduct ourselves like slobs. Come on, you're my doll. Your doll? Please, if that weren't so amusing, one could laugh at it. You're not upset over one lousy elopement, are you? Nathan, do not even try. I have in succeeded in your not being able to upset me no more. I've got you completely out of my... Uh... Asses! Oh, Nathan! Come on, honey, don't ever do that to me again. I can't stand it. We'll be all right. We'll get married, have a nice little house, just like the Whitney Cowell. I know, Nathan, but we gotta do it soon. I had another letter from Mother today asking a lot of questions. And she put in a letter for you, too. A letter for me? Uh-huh. Come on over here. Sit down. Okay. Nathan. Dear son, Nathan, this is my first letter to you although you've now been married to my daughter for 12 years. But I feel like I know you from Adelaide's letters, and in my mind's eye, I can see it as you go down to work every morning at 7. What a responsibility it must be to be the assistant manager of an a and <laughs> I'm not even the manager. I was going to promote you for Christmas. <laughs> I know how hard you have to work to take care of your family. Adelaide and the five children, and the one that's on the way? I had to tell her something. She wanted me to visit. Don't she know I can't afford six kids on what they pay me at the A&P? <laughs> God. I am very proud to have you as a son-in-law. You're a very good man, blah, blah, blah. And I know you always take care of my animal. Jeez, Adelaide, I feel like a heel. But Nathan, look, it's not even yet. We could elope right now. Well, all right, hon. No, no, I can't. What do you mean we can't? Come on, Nathan, we'll be late. 
Nathan, why can't we elope right now? Well, um, I got a prayer meeting to go to. Nathan, that is the biggest lie you have ever told me. But I promise you it's true. Oh, you promised me this, you promised me that, you promised me everything under the sun, and you gave me a kiss, and you grab in your hat, and you rock to the races again, when I think of the time gone by, and I think of the way I tried, I, I could honestly die. So call a lawyer and sue me, sue me, what can you do me? I love you. Give a holler and hate me, hate me. Go ahead and hate me. I love you. Best give my life. I was a fool to get to you. Already I'm just an old good neck. All right, already it's true. So new, so sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. You're gambling you. here, you're gambling there. You gamble on everything, all except me. And I'm sick of you keeping me up in the air till you're back in the money again. When I think of the time gone by, and I think of the way I tried, I could honestly die. Don't serve a paper and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. Give a holler and hate me, hate me. Go ahead and hate me. I love you. You find up in jail, don't come to me to fail you. Well, why? Already, so call a policeman, all right, already it's true, so new, so sue me, sue me, what can you do me, I love you. You're at it again, you're running the game, I'm not gonna play second fiddle to that, I'm sick and I'm tired of stalling, I'm running, I'm telling you now that we're through, when I think of the time, God, my, and I think of the way I tried, I, I could honestly die. Sue me. wrong. I'm wrong. I failed. I've spoken to these people day after day, but my words haven't reached them. I think that you had better... Sarah, one dozen or more assorted sinners. Sorry we didn't have time to clean them up a little bit. Welcome, gentlemen, to the Save Us the Whole Mission. Won't you gentlemen sit down? Sure. Yeah. No. Sit down, all of you! <laughs> Welcome once more to the Save Us All Mission. Yeah. Yeah. All right, hold on a second. This is a mission, not Roseland. I suggest that you do not indulge in any unpleasantness. Since I am required to depart for points west tonight, I am appointing uh, Nathan Detroit, Major Dumbo in my place. Nathan, if anyone does not conduct themselves according to Hoyle, they will answer to Sky Masterson personally. And that does mean in person. Ooh. So you got that, you guys? Eh? Yeah. yeah. Sister Abenati, you dice. Gentlemen, we are honored. Tonight, the meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Cartwright. I'm glad to see our mission, graced by the presence of so many evil-looking sinners. <laughs> now, who would like to give testimony? Who would like to start the ball rolling by giving testimony? Benny, give testimony. That ain't no fool pigeon. Come, brothers, I know it is difficult, but let one of you give testimony to the sin that is in his heart. Come on, Benny, tell him what a bum you are. I always was a bad guy and a gambler, but I ain't gonna do it no more. Thank you. There, 
Don't you feel better now? I'm all right. Uh, Anybody else? Big Julie. Well, I used to be bad when I was a kid, but ever since then I've gone straight, as I can prove by my record. 33 arrests, no convictions. Yeah. Um, Harry. Oh, no. Harry the horse. Well, back there when Sky Masterson is rolling us for our souls. What? Sky Masterson, who's rolling a thousand bucks against our souls. I don't think I understand. I do, General. He means that they're only here because Mr. Masterson won them in a dice game. How wonderful! This whole meeting, the result of gambling. It shows how good can come out of evil. Sergeant Sayre, you have done remarkable work. Hasn't she, though? Thank you. But hey, ain't finished with my testimony yet. Anyhow, my sins is that back there, I wish I would have won the thousand bucks instead of having to come here. But now that I'm here, I still wishes it. Yeah. Anybody else? We will now hear testimony from Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Get up, you fat water buffalo. It's having me kind of funny. Mike in a dream. Ooh. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on a boat to heaven And by some chance I had brought my dice along And there I stood And I hollered someone fade me But the passengers, they know right from wrong For the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're off the boat But the passengers were bound to resist. For the people of everywhere, you're on a heavenly trip. People's everywhere, beware you stole the ship. And the devil will drag you under by the fancy tie on your wicked throat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. Said to myself, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil will drag you under with a soul so heavy you'll never pull up. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. 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 Sit down. testifying in court, where I will testify that you ran a crap game in this mission here last night. Miss Sarah, you were standing here when they came out. You saw them. Aren't these the fellows? Miss Sarah? I never saw them before in my life. <sighs> now there's a right broad. Now, officer, if you would excuse us, we would like to continue with our meeting. I've never seen crap shooters spend so much time in a mission. I guess that's what they mean by holy rollers. <laughs> Guys, I also got to make a confession. We did shoot crap here last night. And for that, we truly are sorry. Ain't we, boys? Yeah. yeah. I'm really sorry. But I did another thing wrong. You see, I bet this guy that he couldn't take a dollar away with him. And for that, I shouldn't have done. Although it did no harm considering I won the best. You won the best? Yeah, the guy said he didn't take it. So that makes me feel pretty much better. 
Hallelujah. 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 Gentlemen, we will now sing number 244, Follow the Fold. Understanding and the pain will go away. In the Bible, it tells us in Isaiah. 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 Oh, you got a boyfriend named Isaiah, huh? <laughs> Isaiah was an ancient prophet. Don't tell me that. Nobody cries like that over some old guy. <laughs> Whoever it is, you got it bad, honey. You know, the other night when I saw you with Sky Masterson. Oh no. You're in love with Sky, you poor thing. I thought I hated him. I thought I hated Nathan. I still think I hate Nathan. <laughs> That's love. Adelaide, can't men like Sky ever change? For 14 years, I've tried to change Nathan. I thought how wonderful he would be if he was different. I thought about Sky that way, too. Hour by hour, I sit and think of my Nathan in a little home in the country. Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it? If only Scott... But they just can't change. A little while ago at our prayer meeting, there were an awful lot of gamblers who acted as though maybe they could change. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that... Gamblers? At your prayer meeting? Or was Nathan, Nathan Detroit there? I'm sure I heard that name. A cute little fellow with dimples. Yeah, I think so. How do you like that? Just when he ought to be lying, he's telling the truth. I'm glad I'm through with him, and you should be glad you're through with Nathan. Sky, I'm Nathan. Oh. 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 I am. Me too. Oh, what, are we crazy or something? At Wanamakia's and Saxon Klein's, a lesson I've been taught. You can't get alterations on a dress you haven't bought. At any vegetable market from Borneo to Nome, you mustn't squeeze the melon till you get the melon home. You've simply got to gamble. You get no guarantee. Now that's not kind of a fly to you. Why not? Why not what? 
though he may be Much as he likes to play Crazy and wild and free But marry the man today Rather than sigh in sorrow Marry the man today And change his way tomorrow Marry the man today Marry the man today Maybe he's leaving town Day. Come on, let's go. Where's the sweat? Let's go. Holy smoke. What? I forgot to get a place for the wedding. Oh, Nathan. Hey, maybe you could try the Billmore garage. Gentlemen, life is one big crap game, and the devil is using loaded dice. Where's the crap game? Brother Masterson? Brother Detroit. Hey, uh, maybe you could marry Adelaide me in your mission? Certainly, I could. I married Brother Masterson and Sister Sarah yesterday, and I'd be very happy to do the same for you. Congratulations, Nathan. I'll let eight to five, you'll be very happy. What Obadiah means is... Obadiah! He wishes you every happiness, and so do I. Oh, thank you very much. I know we'll be happy because Nathan will be beside me every single night. And two. <laughs> when, when you see a guy, three twin stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some time. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for a chain. When you meet a gent, Paying all kinds of rent for a flat that could flatten the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money. That the guys know me doing it for some dog.
This was the biggest team effort I've ever been involved in. I'd like to thank Jim Radimer and the technology class for building the set, Brian the Valley and the art class for do, excuse me, doing all this great painting, and I'd especially like to thank my assistant, his first show uh, directing, Chris Savage. Come on up here. and dolls in oh, wonderful hey. array of clothing and uh, many of these costumes were handmade, handpicked. I couldn't have done it without Barb Gachowski. Where is she? <laughs> and of course, no show would ever be complete without an incredible piano player. Let's give it for Mary Tyler. Thank <laughs> you. 